Welcome to the on-site solar pitch deck template. This short video is meant to help explain to users how to modify and use this resource. It's designed for city staff that are tasked with on-site solar procurement, and its purpose is to help them easily prepare a presentation to educate key decision makers about the benefits of on-site solar and secure the early buy-in for exploring on-site solar projects. This template includes slide templates with easily modifiable graphs and helpful information to help pitch on-site solar to those key decision makers. In this video, we'll help explain how to modify those graphs and slides to your local context. When using this pitch deck, it's helpful to identify the story you're trying to tell and then identify the relevant slides in this deck that can help convey that message. There's instruction callouts on each slide to help you understand how to modify the content of each slide. And feel free to enter into slideshow mode to see how the animations change on each slide. I'll now go through each slide, helping you understand how to modify each slide in the deck. So starting off, here's just an example title slide where you can enter the presenter's name, title, and email. And also feel free to update the picture to your city's local context. This PowerPoint template covers the following topics, including level setting to explain what is on-site solar, why to pursue on-site solar, available financing structures and case studies, and next steps. But I will spend the majority of this video on the heart of the template, the why should we pursue on-site solar section to demonstrate how to modify the slides to your context. But first I'll breeze through what is on-site solar. This first section is meant to explain on-site solar at a high level so that everyone in the room has at least a base understanding of on-site solar. We include icons to illustrate that on-site systems typically fall into rooftop, parking, or ground mount systems and directly feed into and power the local site to reduce its electrical usage. Next, we illustrate how on-site solar systems send excess power back onto the grid, and if net metering is enabled, the city receives credits for that excess power. The only instructions on this slide is to click on the link and determine one, if net metering is enabled, and two, any net metering restrictions, such as system size, utilities, total net metering limit, and monthly versus annual true up. So after getting key decision makers up to speed on what is on-site solar, we can now move to the heart of this PowerPoint template on why should one pursue on-site solar. This first slide speaks to some of the high-level benefits that on-site solar can provide to the city, including climate, economics, the local economy, health, resilience, and visibility. And as the call-out instruction notes, feel free to reorder the benefits on this slide to reflect your city's priorities. It also speaks to the fact that this template has one slide dedicated to each of these six topics, each of which I'll now go through how to modify. This first slide speaks to how on-site solar can help you meet your renewable energy goals and decrease greenhouse gas emissions. The first point speaking to how an on-site project can increase your renewable energy percentage in the context of your city's goal, where you currently stand in terms of meeting that goal and how much on-site solar can help close the remaining gap. The next point speaks to how an on-site solar project can decrease greenhouse gas emissions and putting that into the context of things that are a little bit easier to understand than metric tons of CO2, such as vehicle miles driven or homes powered per year. The instructions conveyed help to illustrate how to modify the red text and the graph to the right, which I'll show you how to do now. First thing to do is to modify the red text, which in this example, we'll assume that we are the city in the city of Charlotte, North Carolina, and that their goal is 100% renewable energy by 2030. We can also assume that they currently generate about 15% renewable energy. And the next thing we can do is right click the graph and click edit data in Excel, which opens up an embedded Excel file for that graph with instructions at the top left to fill in the yellow cells. The first one being 
the assumption of future annual energy change. So currently it's assuming that annual electricity will decrease by 1% per year. The second assumptions are the renewable energy goals. And since we are assuming the city of Charlotte, North Carolina's 100% by 2030 goal, we can update those assumptions accordingly. And you can see that the graph on the right will also update. But what we'll have to do is change that from 2040 to 2030 by dragging the data selected from 2040 up to 2030. And as you can see, the graph will update accordingly. The second thing that we'll have to do is calculate the greenhouse gas reductions by assuming a one megawatt project, selecting North Carolina, which looking at the graph on the right is the region SRVC. And what this does is calculate the greenhouse gas reductions and the context of those in the orange cells. So what we can do is then update that accordingly by saying a one meg megawatt project would reduce around 1,000 1, metric tons of CO2 per year, which is equal to two, two and a half million vehicle miles driven per year 177 homes powered per year, 16,000 trees planted per year, and around 1.1 million pounds of coal burned per year. And after doing that, we can move on to the following slide. And the following slide speaks to how on-site solar would stabilize and could lower energy bills for the city. First, speaking to historical electricity prices in your state. And second, how those electricity prices compare to the life cycle cost of solar in your region. And the instructions outline how to update these graphs, which I'll also explain how to do now. Again, we'll right click on the graph to edit data in Excel and the embedded Excel file that opens will have instructions, which for this graph, all we will have to do is select the state of North Carolina and the graph on the right will update accordingly. And we'll check to make sure that it updates as well in the, in the presentation, which it does. We'll do the same thing on the graph on the right by right clicking the graph and clicking edit data in Excel. And in the embedded Excel file that opens, Again, we'll follow the instructions to select the state of North Carolina, type in the city of Charlotte, enter in a zip code in Charlotte, and then decide whether to keep the default of a 30% tax incentive, 25 year system life, and nominal discount rate of 5%. And what will happen is the graph on the right will calculate the commercial solar cost, which in this case, it's being calculated as the levelized cost of electricity. And the second thing we'll have to do for this graph, for this bar on the, on the left here, is decide whether we want the city or state electricity rate, which in this case, we could assume the city rate, and then we would have to enter that our own, which in this case, we could assume is around nine cents per kilowatt hour. Then we'll make sure that the graph updates accordingly in the presentation, which it does. Now moving on to how on-site solar can support local jobs and spur economic development. First, to calculate the number of jobs supported by an on-site project, simply multiply the system size in megawatts by 20 full-time jobs per megawatt. So in our example, we have a one megawatt system size and we multiply the number of megawatts, in this example, one times 20 to get 20 full-time construction and installation jobs. Next, determine the number of solar jobs in the state. We'll click on this link on the right, which will take us to SIA's website that lists the solar capacity and jobs in each state. 
So by moving the cursor over each state, we can see on the left that in North Carolina, there are around 6,700 jobs in North Carolina. So we will return to the PowerPoint and update the red text accordingly to say that there are currently 6,700 solar jobs in North Carolina. Moving on to how on-site solar can provide regional health benefits from the avoided fossil fuel emissions, including a graph on the right, which speaks to the health benefits in different regions, as well as the specific quantified health benefits of an on-site solar project with instructions on how to modify that red text, which I will again show you now. By right-clicking on the legend and clicking on open, the embedded Excel file again has instructions on how to modify the user inputs in yellow, which has a one megawatt system size in North Carolina, which is in the region of the Southeast. And what this does is calculate that the annual health benefits would be on the order of around $41,800. So what we would do then is update the text accordingly by saying a one megawatt project would result in around $41,800 per year in public health benefits as well as looking back to see that the health benefits are around $27 per megawatt hour, which we can then update the title slide to say. Next, moving on to the topic of how when pairing on-site solar with batteries, it can help increase resilience for those systems and how they're increasingly cost-effective. And one way to speak to resilience is talking about the number of natural disasters that have occurred in your region and how when pairing storage at those critical facilities, it can provide clean and reliable power during those disasters. Another helpful point is how storage is increasingly cost effective. And we include a couple of citations on how studies have shown that government facilities have experienced around $5,000 in losses per year and how costs have declined by 85% in the last decade, making them an even more cost effective option. And the last red text speaking to the number of outages that have occurred in your region and how that has resulted in hours of lost productivity. Again, the instructions indicate how to update this red text, which I'll show you now. First, by clicking on the link at the right, it'll take you to FEMA's site where you can select your state, which will select North Carolina and then selecting the county that Charlotte sits in, we can see that that county has experienced 10 natural disasters in the last 70 years. But also we can see when those have occurred, six of which being in the last 20 years. So then going back to our presentation, we could update the red text accordingly by saying that the county has experienced 10 disasters since 1950 six of which have occurred since 2000. And next we'll click on the second link that's listed, which takes us to EIA's site, where on the right, we can download 2018 data that EIA tracks, which includes lots of various data sources, but if we click on reliability 2018, we can see the grid outages that have occurred for each utility last year. So for Charlotte, we can find the associated utility, Duke Energy Carolinas, and see that they experienced around 1.8 outages last year that lasted around 910 minutes each. So by doing a quick calculation of 1.8 outages per year that lasted 910 minutes each, converting that to hours, we can see that 
they had 1.8 outages last year, resulting in around 27 hours of lost productivity. Now moving on to the next slide, which speaks to how on-site solar can provide visible progress towards your goals and educate and inspire the community. Now this slide does not have anything, any modifiable text, but as a reminder, as a talking point, you may want to consider connecting on-site solar to specific city education or community engagement goals. And the three points speak to how an on-site solar project can visibly show renewable energy progress, allows for hands-on solar education when installed at facilities like community centers and schools. And lastly, how an on-site solar project on your municipal building can accelerate local community-wide solar adoption. The next part of the pitch deck speaks to various financing structures that are available, including how it works, advantages and challenges, as well as case studies for each structure. And since this section includes slides that are less customizable without any modifiable red text, I'll move through them fairly quickly. This first slide speaks to direct ownership, where one would pay for the full system cost up front and then pay $0, $0 for all future energy produced including some of the advantages and challenges of direct ownership, as well as a case study in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Some of the instructions include identifying any available rebates and incentives to help make this ownership structure look more attractive. And, it, and if helpful, we've included a link to some of the typical upfront costs for commercial systems. This next slide speaks to power purchase agreements, including again, how it works, some of the advantages and challenges, as well as a case study in Washington, DC. The only instructions on this slide are to identify whether your, your municipality limits the length of long-term contracts, as well as identifying in the link provided if solar PPAs are available in your state. Next, we have a slide on solar leases. Again, how it works, advantages, challenges, and a case study in Kansas City, Missouri, that utilized a solar lease when a solar PPA was not available. Again, the only instructions here are to ad identify whether lease agreements are available in your state using the link provided. Lastly, we include a slide on energy service per performance contracts, also known as ESPCs, including how it works, some of the unique advantages, challenges, and a case study in Lowell, Massachusetts. The last section of this deck includes a section on what should be requested from key decision makers moving forward and is also fairly straightforward without too many instructions on modifying text. So I'll move through them again fairly quickly. This first slide speaks to the general procurement process, how long each process will likely take so that the key decision makers can have a better understanding of how long each process will likely take and where you are at currently in the process. The only instructions here are to modify the red text accordingly. And the last slide of this deck speaks to what you might be requesting from key decision makers moving forward, including staff and resources and a general timeline and how that will impact staff members time. Next, if there are any funding requests where you may have to work with the city CFO to determine budget implications or publicity where you may need the support once the RFP has been released or working with the communications department to strategically prioritize your efforts. And a lot of that text was left in red, knowing that a lot of that will be specific to your context. And again, the only instructions on this slide is really to update that text and identify which parts are relevant to your context. And that concludes this video.